Hello, this is another free online homework help video from alexpleasehelp.com. My name is Alex, and I am here to help with your tricky math and physics problems. I am going to work out a problem involving a crate that is sliding down a ramp that is on rollers. So in this problem, the it's a it's like another one of those crate down a ramp problems, except now the ramp is moving. This problem comes out of Hibbler, 2007. It's a dynamics textbook. It involves the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. Before I get too deep in the video, please hit the HQ button down at the bottom near here, or the expand video player size near the top. The text is much easier to read if the video is bigger, or you can just go ahead and blow the thing up to full screen. So let's get to the problem. A crate starts from rest at the top of a freely moving, frictionless ramp. The crate weighs 80 pounds and the ramp weighs 120 pounds. The crate is released from rest and it slides down the ramp. It slides down the 15 foot face of the ramp. Find the velocity of the ramp when the crate reaches the bottom. How far does the ramp move when the crate slides down the ramp? Okay, so the, this is the way the uh, ramp looks. It's 9 foot tall, 12 foot wide, and the face is 15 foot long. This problem on the surface is a little tricky, uh, but when you figure out where to start, it just falls into place. First, I'm going to get call out the uh, information that we need. I like working these types of problems in the metric system rather than the English system, which is what this problem gives. Uh, it's much easier because when you convert all your numbers to the metric system, the uh, you don't have to do any conversions within the equations. It's just much easier because the answers are built around the metric system. I much prefer the metric. And I'll convert back to the English system at the end. Uh, so the mass of the crate in kilograms is 36.287. Mass of the ramp in kilograms is 54.31 kilograms. Gravity is 9.807. Theta is the arc sine of the height divided by the hypotenuse of the ramp, which is 36.87 degrees and the height in meters is 2.743. Okay, it's important to note that this problem requires knowledge of the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. Energy is a scalar quantity. Momentum is a vector quantity. So when we go to momentum, we have to first get the vector components of the velocity of the ramp and the velocity of the crate. The ramp is just moving in the horizontal direction, so it only has one component in the x direction. It, the total velocity is just the x component. There is no y component. But the crate is doing something a little funky. If the ramp were not moving, the velocity would be exactly along the face of the ramp. But since the ramp is moving toward the right, that means the x component of the crate is going to be slightly more to the right. So it's not going to be along the ramp. That's why you see in this diagram that the vector is down more. If you, relative to an observer outside of this system, the crate actually moves at this slight angle, not down the face of the ramp. So you got to figure out what its components are. And here's what the, here's what it looks like. The x component is negative in the negative y direction, in that, that direction. So, or negative x direction, excuse me. So we have the velocity of the crate in the x direction, which is being multiplied by the cosine of theta. And we have to subtract out the ramp's velocity to get, because this is a relative velocity that, that you're working with here. And that's in the negative direction. So simplifying that, we get vr minus vc cosine theta. That's the x direction. In the y direction, it's just whatever the y component is, which is the total velocity vc with a negative out front times sine theta. And here is the final form of the uh, vector component vector components of the crate's velocity. Okay, so if we want to get the magnitude of these things, we just say, okay, the magnitude of the ramp's velocity is just, is just this. The magnitude of the cart's velocity is, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem and plug in both components. I'm not going to be doing much plugging and chugging until I get to the end. I'm going to work in symbolic form just so you can see where things are going. If you work better with the plugging and chugging each every step of the way, go for it, but I don't recommend that. It, there, it, there's more room for error, I think. That's just my opinion, though. So let's start with the conservation of energy. We have 
conservation of energy states that all the energy at the beginning is going to be equal to all the energy at the end if there are no losses. And in this case, there are no losses because the ramp is frictionless. So we have all the energy at the, at initially is localized all in the crate's potential energy. At the end, we have kinetic energy of the ramp and kinetic energy of the crate. So PEC equals KER plus KEC. There's no potential energy at the end because the crate has reached the bottom of the ramp. So when we plug in all our, all our variables for this, the potential energy is MC times G times H, and all the kinetic energy stuff gets plugged in. Remember I said earlier that energy is a scalar quantity. It is non-directional, so we have to get the magnitude of the velocity components in here. So we have the magnitude of VR squared times 1 half MR, and then 1 half MC, and then the magnitude of VC squared. And we plug uh, the magnitudes in from this guy up here, we get this big honking equation. It looks a little messy, but if you practice a little bit with this sort of thing, you'll be fine. Simplifying the uh, second part over here, when you square a radical, the radical goes away and so does the exponent. So we just have these things. So I'm going to leave this here for a second and then I'm going to hop over to the conservation of momentum in the x direction. So, so since there's no uh, change in momentum of the ramp in the x direction, um, in the y direction rather, it would be kind of pointless to do the y direction for the momentum. So we're just going to do the x direction. So we have all the momentum initially is going to equal all the momentum at the end. Initially there is no momentum, but finally we have M MR times VR plus MC times the uh, relative velocity, which we got from up here. So when we solve for VC, we get this. VC VR plus the total mass divided by MC cosine theta. So bringing down these two guys to the next step, we have we have to plug VC, what we solve for, into the energy equation. We have to plug th that into that, and when we do that, we get this. It looks a little messy, but if you work with it, you can simplify it down into something that looks like this. When you factor out VR, VR squared, all you're left with is this uh, big quotient here. VR factors out of everything and you're left with just that. So if we solve for VR squared, we get this. We take this, ra this quotient, multiply it on both sides by the reciprocal, and we get VR squared equals all this stuff square root both sides to solve for VR and we get that VR equals 2.721 meters per second or in the English system VR equals 8.928 feet per second so this is the answer to the first part so the second part is um, a little a little bit more tricky uh, or not not so much tricky you got it's just you got to figure out what what to do it can be a little different. So when you solve for VC, that this is just something I threw in here. I, I, I jumped the gun a little bit, but here's the here are the two velocities of the car of the uh, of the ramp in English and metric. And when you plug back VR in, you can solve for VC. And here it is, in case you were curious. So we can rewrite the momentum equation to solve for V to sol to say to solve for VR, and we can then go from here when we know the definition of what velocities are, it's the delta distance over time in the x direction. So delta x over t and delta x over t again. The t's will cancel. And since the distance that the crate travels is 15 feet, we can solve for the distance that the ramp travels. We just plug 15 into here, and it's 4.8 feet. Or and the metric is 1.463 meters. So that's how you solve this problem. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, comment underneath the video and I'll put a note in it. I just want to recap all the final answers here. The velocities of, of the ramp in English and metric, 8.92 feet, feet per second and 2.7 meters per second. The ramp moves 
4.8 feet or 1.463 meters. Submit your problems to me. I have a form on the website. If you have a tricky math or physics problem, I'll help you out with it in a video. Uh, www.alexplacehelp.com. There's a link in the sidebar. Please check out the videos that I have uh, posted and please rate and comment and subscribe. I'm trying to make this thing viral and I believe that knowledge should be free. So please spread the word. Thanks.